Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Lathrix. And of course, welcome back once more to the Rocking Vulture. Now, after the last episode, I went about fixing the lag and fixing a lot of small issues which were plaguing my game, and I'm happy to say the lag has all but gone, and hopefully it will remain that way for the rest of the episode. But only time will tell. And then, off camera, I started doing some work on the Vulture itself, adding a manually fired set of EMP missiles on the bottom and some regular missile systems on the top which are frag and explosive. This way we have some more consistent damage during battles and of course I just kind of love missiles so that makes me very very happy. I have also went ahead and massively changed these turrets. Although they look the same on the surface they no longer have any belt fed loaders so their fire rate right has sadly been halved. However, because of this, they now no longer run out of ammo. They will consistently fire at around about 340 rounds per minute forever, rather than 600 for about two minutes or in short bursts. So they're still pretty good, and I've even changed the shells themselves to be purely kinetic shells, almost no armor piercing, so now if they hit a piece of armor they will simply break it. They can even do a lot of damage to heavy armor, which of course is the newest armor type if I can find it, which is remarkably heavy but also remarkably heavily armored, and two shots will even break one of these. So clearly Clearly these turrets will shred anything, and because they are now pure solid, they are also a little bit slower, which means they do go through shields a little bit better. So with all of that explanation out of the way, and the fact that the Vulture is rocking horribly until I redo all of the thrusters and rotors on the inside, let's go out and find ourselves a fight to see if all of these weapons actually work. Our first enemy, not exactly the largest, but at least it's somewhat well defended. Now these missiles are the manually fired missiles, but they are using only explosive warheads just to see how effective that would actually be. Most likely I will be swapping them to EMP in the future. So then, let's see how they do. First hit, second hit, large chunks being taken off the front, and yep, AI dead, completely destroyed it by going straight through the center, so not bad. Not bad for what is essentially a flying chunk of metal, especially at the front there, which is literally just a chunk of metal. So a decent start to a fight, but maybe I should swap them back over to EMP, or perhaps into fragment and have the fragment at the minimum cone angle. And for what I'm talking about there, because it sounds really weird to say out loud, I am talking about with Fragment Warheads, you can alter the Fragment Cone Angle to be between 1 and 180 degrees, which means you can have all of the Fragments go directly forwards or have them in more of a spray element. Of course, having them go directly forward means they act a bit like a sniper, and I think perhaps something like that would be better. Explosive Warheads along with a couple of Fragment. Let's see how well these ones do. Explosive and frag versus a tiny little opponent. There are our missiles now turning around to face it, and let's see how they do. Wow, that is kind of awesome, honestly, to see that. Come on, you can do it. Just a little bit faster, missiles. A little bit faster. You can do it. Wow, look how close that is. That is ridiculous and utterly amazing at the same time. Really, the missiles, you're going to go the full three kilometers chasing after this craft like that was honestly worth it i'm actually glad that missed because that was absolutely glorious try again i'm going to keep on trying because this thing can't even hit us because it is using infrared missiles which are being distracted by our flares so yet they're not agile enough to catch up with it on the way towards it and then once they go past it they're just about not fast enough so what i'm going to do is quickly change it so that they're variable thrusters are a little bit faster. Just look at that! Oh, that is fantastic to watch! Well done, Steel Striders. That is really cool. And here we go again, this time with faster, more agile versions of the previous missiles. And there we are! Down it goes very quickly. They are actually fairly agile now. Even before, they were pretty good, it's just now they're specialised for that and only that. As you can see, much shorter range. 
That's a lot of fun. And that's why I like missiles. They are so easy to change the roles of. The next test, still using explosive and fragment, and also very thankful that the enemies now are far, far more frequent. I'm afraid those flares will not help you since these are tracking using the detection system. And, yeah, that's pretty much that by the looks of things. It might not be quite dead, but that was a horrific chain reaction. Was everything explosive attached to everything else? Because it really seemed like it. Not upset about that though. Explosives always make me happy, so a lot of happiness created there. So I think it's safe to say that the fragment and explosive does a little bit better than pure explosive. So now it's time to test out EMP. Please remember yet again these are not going to be our main missiles. Those are going to be the two pods on the top and eventually two pods on the side which I will build once I have the resources for it and they are going to be pure destruction and those are going to be explosive and fragment. This is more for the one-off explosive explosion at the start, or in this case, EMP. Testing out the EMP missiles now, and we have a White Flyer ship over there, we have a small, I think, Onyx Watch ship over there, and we have a Scarlet Dawn ship very, very close to us, which is just about to be hit by the EMP. It's time to test out the various weapons we have at our disposal. Sadly, the first volley completely missed, so here we go again with the second round of EMP missiles, a lot of them hitting, and with a lot of warheads. Yeah, if they were going to do anything, they would have already done it. So, by the looks of things, this particular flyer is very, very resistant against EMP damage, doing absolutely nothing. So, let's fly on over to the Onyx Watch, and if it doesn't do anything against them as well, I think it would be better to go back to Explosive or Frag or a mix of both, which certainly seems like the more viable option so far. That is the one problem with EMP. At the moment, a lot Lots of different designs have been hardened against it because they've had to add all of the detection systems and stuff and then there's been a lot of surge protectors and other defenses against it. So next volley, this time against the Onyx Watch, or perhaps not some of them going somewhere else, but at least some of them are indeed going towards the intended target, although not as many as I would like. Spreading very well and practically nothing yet again, and this is a lot of warheads, so if this doesn't do anything, it's just not going to happen, it's really not going to happen. So let's quickly swap them back over to explosive and then test them against the ships. Here they go, this time pure fragment warheads, let's see how these do. Some of them are on the sniper setting, some of them far less so, just to make it a little bit more varied, and wow! They went straight through the armor, perhaps on a much more heavily armored opponent, that would have been even more deadly, but because they caught it at weird angles, some of the fragments simply didn't hit the target. Either way though, it has sent it into a death spiral, so definitely better than the EMP equivalent. I also checked, and I was using 8 warheads for that last test. The next volley incoming, and let's see how this one does with all of those balloons surrounding it. Some internal explosions, remember that these missiles don't really explode since they are pure fragments, only those tiny explosions are from the missiles themselves. Yeah, I really do feel like a more heavy, slower opponent would be very, very weak against these. Because it is going straight through the metal, but it's never quite getting the right angle. Also, we are just taking armor-piercing round after armor-piercing round, let's move our butts away. Move, Vulture, who still needs to be- I know I still need to rename it, I will, I will. Okay, let's see if we can just make sure to dodge the Onyx Watch shots there, that would be lovely. Just about. Why are you still going after me? Go after the other guys. Fragments hitting the target, and let's see how they do. A few internal explosions there, but nothing major. Oh, the last one proving me wrong, going through the outer shell. And not as impressive as I first thought. It does seem like missiles are the target of quite a few nerfs. I remember a month or two months ago there were some serious nerfs to fragment warheads, in addition to fast firing turrets, which is basically my two favourite types of weapons. So perhaps going for explosive against heavy armour and then fragment to destroy everything else 
really does seem to be the best idea. It's the most logical, it makes the most sense, so let's change them again. And here we are, testing out our turrets and our regular missiles, which are on the top of the craft. Now these will be constantly firing during the battle, and as you can see, they do fairly decently themselves. They are just smaller variants of the ones we have been testing so far. Not overly keen on the shells, though. Although they did just go through some metal there, when they are hitting, they don't seem to do enough damage to really warrant how much armor piercing I've lost. So, maybe going back to armor piercing will be the best idea. Yeah, it does a fair bit of damage, but it takes about two shells to destroy a single piece of metal, and considering we are now shooting far slower, if consistently, I don't think that will be a good enough change. So I'm going to go back to either explosive or pure armor piercing. In fact, what we could do is go for explosive shells, which are less damaging but much faster, so far more gunpowder. Apparently there is an enemy in the distance. Sadly, the enemy here is quite a weak one. It's simply one of the deep water guards. So to have a bit of fun, we're going to mess around with proximity fuses. And so let's release the missiles. Now these should detonate before actually hitting the target, thus giving the frags the perfect opportunity to do quite a bit of damage around the target rather than exactly where they're going towards. Night time is just now going away. We have been on this plane for around about two hours, and so far, I have to admit, I am not happy with what I've built so far. The missiles have been considerably nerfed since the last time I used them as a primary weapon source several months ago, at least in terms of a major primary weapon source. And the turrets are not as good as I thought either. The different types of shell just aren't working out very well, and because of our limited space, we don't really have enough loaders to keep on firing at a decent rate if we are using such a small shell type. So what I'm going to have to do, which I'm very sad about, is simply use the missiles as a consistent source of damage rather than a one giant amount of damage at the start of the fight and perhaps scale them back in size but increase them in number, and then with the missiles, sorry, with the turrets, go for half belt fed loaders and half regular loaders. This way we have a lot of burst damage at the start and then we can kind of trickle off to a normal but low damage after that, rather than simply turning off once the ammo is finished. Oh dear, now that is actually terrifying. These are from the White Flyers, and they are going to shred our vessel if they get close enough. So please, fire everything you have. That would make me very, very happy. And as you can see, I've actually improved the detection system again, so now they are guessing where they're going a little bit better. And I forgot to change the missiles from their old type back to a more functional type, although saying that, that definitely worked out fairly well. But these are quite frail opponents. If they do get hit, they tend to die. Their whole spiel is just to get close enough to shred you to bits and try not to get hit. And there's our regular missiles there doing a very good job, and yeah, that's going to go down now. Goodbye. And the third, and yes, they do actually come in a pair of three when they regularly spawn in into the campaign as well. The frag missiles do surprisingly well. I just, I don't know. What I think I might do, and I think this may be what I end up doing permanently, is I'm going to have half of them be frag and explosive, and the other half be pure explosive, and I feel like that is going to do the best job. When it comes to the detection system, however, I just don't know what I'm doing wrong. I'm, I keep on taking advice from people. I've even gone to the forums. By the looks of things, I've got everything set up correctly, but I keep on missing shots, and not missing shots because of pure accuracy problems, but missing shots because the turrets don't aim at the correct place. It's a matter of not tracking the opponent correctly. So not quite sure what we're going to do about this, honestly. 
Another way we could make the turrets a little bit more effective is by adding different shell types to the same turret. This way, they will be firing a multitude of different types of shots, thus making them a little bit more consistent in terms of what they can counter and what they can't. That way, it should make us a better all-round type of vehicle, which is something we really need, considering the enemies are pretty much random. That is certainly something we could do, but for now, I've just altered the shells one last time for the episode and gone back to my old type, the old armor piercing only shells, which I'm really happy with. So, they're going to do a good enough job. Weapons only. Well, I've been tinkering with my detection system and that was pretty good, honestly. And it does seem to be doing better. It has already gave up, hence why the last few shots wasn't even trying, but... That did seem to actually fire ahead of the target, so maybe I fixed it, maybe not. It really just came down to not having enough variety when it came to my detection systems. And there I am over there. For some reason, the mouse keeps on doing this. Today, I'm not quite sure what's going on. I think it's my mouse, not the game, but it's making recording really annoying. Hopefully, before the end of the episode, we can face off against one more difficult opponent like in the previous episode, because we haven't even used the missiles on the top yet. They do work, I promise! They are fully functioning missiles, which are just smaller variants of the missiles on the underside of the ship. I just want to use them and showcase the fact we now have consistent damage, and so we can start moving towards a slower vehicle, which can be more just constant constantly in combat without having to run away all the time, because at the moment we are still a hit and run type of vehicle, we're not something which is meant to be stuck in combat for any amount of time. So please, give me something difficult. No, 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 I did not even think for a second that perhaps the enemy white flyer vehicle with the spikes might be trying to ram me. Okay, let's move out the way and try to shoot it again, please. Yep, definitely better detection system now. Another thing I have changed is how often we detect the enemy's speed. It turns out it was set to 5 seconds, which means every 5 seconds we try to detect the speed and then compare it to where the enemy was 5 seconds ago to determine the overall speed of the enemy and then where it's going to be. This is really good against enemies which constantly swap where they're going, similar to a flying squirrel, because it's not being distracted by the constant slow and speed ups, but it does mean it's very poor against everything else. It's a general purpose one, but now I've changed it down to two seconds, we can see it is a lot better. The, the detection system is one of those things, it's not difficult, it just takes a bit of getting used to, and I think I finally got it. It's taken me weeks of every now and again having a look at it, but I think I finally got it. I say, whilst thinking about other things I could try to fix. Weapons only. Well, that was pretty easy, and very, very successful, so I don't think I've learned everything I need to learn for, for the detection systems. I believe just a lot of tinkering will eventually get me to the place where I can say I have learned everything, but I'm certainly getting better at it, and I think that's what I should have said before. The missile system is doing pretty well. Uh, the end missiles were actually from the top section, and they seem to do perfectly fine. The explosive and frag seem to be the best combination at the bottom, and right now now, I'm feeling pretty good about the Vulture. I know I still need to rename it even at the end of the episode. The guns I'm not so happy with. I do believe I will have to mix both 
the belt-fed loaders and the regular loaders, but considering we have now been on this plane of existence for a grand total of seven hours, and almost no fights except for what I've shown today in today's episode, I think I'm going to change the warp plane and try and find a stronger battle soon. I may go down a difficulty just to explore that section, or I may go up a difficulty again. It really depends how I feel. Either way, though, I've learned a lot today. I hope it wasn't too boring, and I really hope you have enjoyed. If you have enjoyed, or at least tolerated, a bit of an odd episode, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff, help out me, help out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future. Thank you so much for watching, and goodbye.